In this video, we're going to talk about the inverse trig functions. Trig functions. All of the trig functions have inverses. In this video, though, we're only going to focus on sine, cosine, and tangent. So first, the inverse sine function is called y equals arc sine of x. Another way to write this is y equals sine inverse of x. So these both mean the same thing. It looks like it's an exponent, but it's not. It just means inverse function. And the most important thing to know is the range of this function. So the range of this function is going to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The domain of this function will be negative 1 to 1. Another really important inverse trig function is arc cosine. So it's arc cosine of x. And another way to write this is y equals cosine inverse of x. And the range of this function is 0 pi. And the domain is also negative 1 to 1. And the last one we're going to look at in this video is y equals arc tangent of x. Or you can write it as y equals tan inverse of x. And the range of this function is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the domain is negative infinity to infinity. OK, let's just jump in and do some uh, examples. So some examples. Compute. So before I do this example, um, let me just mention something. If you have a function f and it takes a and it sends it to b, then the inverse function, so this is equivalent to, that's what this arrow means, equivalent, the inverse function takes b and sends it back to a. So if the inverse takes b and sends it to a, your function takes a and sends it back to b. A function and its inverse uh, undo each other. Okay, so a. Let's compute um, y equals tan inverse of 1. So y is equal to tan inverse of 1. So the way I do these is I always try to show some work. So solution. So tan inverse takes 1 and sends it to y. We need to find the value of y. Well, the tangent function should take y and send it back to 1. And y is in the range of arctan, which we said was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So y is in this interval. So now we just have to figure out what y is using memory and previous knowledge of trig functions. So you want the tangent of y to be equal to 1, and y is an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Well, the only time tangent uh, is equal to 1 is when sine and cosine have the same values. So it's really sine y over cosine y equals 1. So the answer that is between these two numbers is y equals pi over 4. Because at pi over 4, sine and cosine both take on the same value, the square root of 2 over 2. Let's do another one, b. How about this one? y equals arc sine. And this takes a lot of practice to get good at, so um, if you struggle with this, it's, it's normal. <laughs> okay, y equals arc sine of negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, solution. So if the arc sine takes negative square root of 3 over 2 to y, that means the sine of y is equal to the negative square root of 3 over 2. And y is in, well, y is in the range of arc sine, so it's in negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Notice I'm doing both of these examples exactly the same way. I always write down what this means, and then I always write down where y is. I write down what this means, I write down what y is. When I say what this means, I'm getting it from this, right? So the arc sine takes this number and sends it to y, so sine takes y and sends it back to this number. Okay, so let's think about where we are. So we're in negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so 
this is negative pi over 2, and this is pi over 2. So we're somewhere here. So when you see square root of 3 over 2, in your mind, you should immediately go here. You should know that the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2, right? Because that's, that's key. It's a key fact. So the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So pi over 3 is here. You want it to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, that's going to be down here, negative pi over 3. And the reason is that sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. And on the unit circle, y is negative in quadrant 4. So the angle you want is going to be negative pi over 3. An incorrect way to do this would say that it's 5 pi over 3. Right? The sine of 5 pi over 3 is also equal to the negative square root of 3 over 2. However, it's not in the range of arc sine, so it's a common mistake. So always make sure you pay attention to the range. Let's do another one, C. Y equals arc sine of 1 half. Solution. So if the arc sine takes 1 half and sends it to y, that means the sine function takes y and sends it back to 1 half. And y is in negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. And coincidentally, pi over 6 is between these numbers. So the answer is just pi over 6. Let's do another one, d. Let's change the above example to y equals arc sine negative 1 half. So this means that, so solution, this means that the sine function takes y and sends it to negative 1 half. And again, y is in negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we know that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we want it to be negative 1 half, so that's going to be negative pi over 6, and that will be down here. And the reason it's negative 1 half down here is because sine is the y-coordinate on the unit circle, and so sine is negative in this quadrant. So the answer in this case is negative pi over 6. So hopefully as you see these examples, it's starting to make sense. Let's do another one, E. Y equals, how about some cosine stuff, arc cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2 solution. So this means that the cosine of y is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. And y is in 0 pi. That's the range of arc cosine, right? It's the range of arc cosine. So when you think of negative square root of 3 over 2, you should always think of square root of 3 over 2. So we know that the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, right? This is, when you see this number, this is where your mind should go, okay? You want to think of this. You say, okay, but you want it to be negative. So where are we? We're on 0 pi. So we're here. So in this area, cosine will be negative over here because cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So the angle that's a multiple of pi over 6, that's in quadrant 2, is 5 pi over 6. So the cosine of 5 pi over 6 will give you this answer. So y has to be equal to 5 pi over 6. Hope that made sense.